Hi, my name is Robin Wong, and this is the highly requested video on Olympus Workspace. Post-processing is an integral part in digital photography workflow. I've been using the Olympus Workspace extensively, and I want to share as much as I can in this video. Let's do this. If you are new to photography and you are using the Olympus Micro Four Thirds system, the Olympus Workspace may be the best place for you to start exploring post-processing. The Olympus Workspace is free. You can download the software from the Olympus official website. Olympus knows the secret recipe best. They can optimize their raw files from any Olympus cameras in the Olympus workspace, giving you highly detailed images, sharp results, very good high ISO noise control, and possibly the best colors as intended by Olympus in their cameras. However, I do admit that the Olympus Workspace is a basic editing tool. You do get very basic adjustments. You cannot do anything too advanced. There is no layering capabilities. You cannot do any masking. There is no filtering. There is no local adjustments. And I acknowledge that I use the commercially available software, such as the Capture One Pro, for my commercial jobs, just because I need to do a lot more with the software. But if you are just starting out in photography, you just need some basic adjustments you can do a lot with the Olympus Workspace. And I can tell you that the Olympus Workspace is the best free available post-processing software from the manufacturer, any manufacturer out there. I want to show you what you can do with your Olympus Workspace. I will have a lot of different samples in different shooting scenarios, and I'll go through the images one by one, step by step, showing you how I process my images. Let's start with something very easy. This is a photograph of a sunrise overlooking the Kuala Lumpur skyline. However, the image capture was a little bit cold, so I want this to be a bit warmer. So of course, we will play with the white balance. If you come to the third tab here, you see under the white balance, I will go to custom white balance. If we increase the numbers here, say I'll put 12,000, the image will appear a lot warmer. This is how the white balance works. If you decrease the number, say I want to decrease it to 3,500, a much lower number, colder temperature means the image will look a lot colder, which is blue. So I want my sunrise to look really hot because it is very hot in Malaysia, so I'll set it to 12,000. So if you can see there's some details still in the city, I want the buildings to appear perfectly in silhouette. So I will use the highlight and shadow to crush the shadow. I'll go to the shadow tab. I'll drag this down to maybe minus six. And you can see that now the buildings are perfectly in shadow. I think I'm, I'll bring this up a little bit. It's a little bit too dark. And there we go. This is the final image that I think I'm quite happy with. I have a beautiful starburst there and it is it looks like a very warm and hot morning. Uh, I want the sky to be a little bit dramatic. I want my image to be warm. So white balance and a little bit of highlight and shadow adjustment to get this image. In the same topic uh, under white balance, when I process my food photographs, this is a bowl of Sarawak Laksa. It is a specialty from my hometown Kuching. If you go to Kuching Borneo, you must eat this. Again, the camera is trying too hard to balance the warm color. Uh, food generally will look better in, when it appears a little bit warmer. So again, I'll go to custom white balance. I'll go to maybe 6,800. Let's see. I'm just playing this by feel. Maybe I want it a bit warmer, 7050. That's it. And perhaps I would want to decrease the exposure a little bit because it does seem like it's overblown. Then I will decrease the highlights, increase the shadow a little bit, decrease the mid-tone. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good now much better. And you want to see before and after, uh, there is the tab beneath here. Underneath here, this is a single view. You see there's two squares side by side. I'll click that. So you can see the before and after adjustment. So all I did was just change the color. I'm perfectly happy with this color. Uh, if I zoom in, you can see the details. 
this is the sharpness of an Olympus lens. You can see the lens that I use. This is a 25mm f1.8 lens. I shot this at f5.6 basically to get more depth for feel. I don't want to just want prawn to be in focus. I want everything sharp. So I have the prawn noodles, the omelette, you know, and the parsley, everything uh, in focus. There you go. I'm happy with this shot. I'm not going to do any further adjustment. Now for more complex adjustment, this is a... Uh, a very difficult stage lighting, the LED light. Uh, this was as captured, the camera captured this color very faithfully. It, the skin tone is all wrong, but it was what was reflected from the stage light. It is usually destructive. We don't get to choose what kind of color that we want. Now there is a trick for this. If we go to the white balance, uh, the quickest way to get uh, a balanced skin color is to go to gray point specification. You have the eyedropper here. Click on that. Find a gray or white area in the screen. So the microphone is pretty much gray in color. I'm going to select this part just with one click and the image is done. As simple as that. You don't have to go through very complicated steps. It is just one click and you have a pretty much balanced skin tone. Now, another example, I want to adjust this. If I don't use that uh, one click gray point specification, you can also adjust and correct the color manually. Uh, I will tone down the exposure compensation because this shot was a little bit overexposed. Uh, then because if you look at the screen, this color is a little bit purplish. Purple is very close to magenta. So I will drag the custom white balance here. There is the magenta and green slider. I will just push it all the way to the green side. Now the image looks a little bit more balanced, but it is still very cold. Then I will push the cold and warm. I will go to much warmer. There you go. Maybe a little bit warmer. Eh. Yeah, that's as good as it gets. I don't think we can further correct this image. It will just look very wrong. But somewhere there, maybe you just push it up a little bit. It was a little bit too green. Uh, tone down the highlight a little bit more. Bring down the highlight, bring down the shadow. There, I think I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this particular image. The color is as good as it gets. If we compare with the before shot, it is a huge improvement. Just a little bit of slider uh, using the warm and cold slider in the white balance as well as the green and magenta cast. You can basically balance the skin tone. All right, moving along, I think we have done enough adjustments on white balance and skin color. Uh, going to a landscape image. This, was, this is the Table Mountain at South Africa. Uh, Cape Town, South Africa. I visited this place a few years ago. Such a beautiful place. Now, when you have a scene where there's a lot of highlights and shadow within one frame, bright and dark area, the camera will try its best to balance the dark and shadow, the dark and the bright regions, but it doesn't always succeed. So in this case, you do need to intervene and do some heavier processing. Uh, First, I would like to go to gradation. Uh, gradation, the, it was set to normal. I want, so that was the camera setting. Now I will go to auto. When we go to gradation auto, basically we bring up the shadow detail. So just by one click, you have a lot more detail in the shadow. If I show you side by side, if I zoom in, you will see that See, this part is a lot darker and it's a lot brighter now. Just by one click, you can rescue a lot of details. Okay, now I want to overexpose the image a little bit because I want to bring a lot more details in the shadow area. Okay, then I would like to crush the highlight. I'll go to minus seven because I want to preserve uh, the waves. Then I'll further increase the shadow a little bit. Let's do to see a little bit more detail. Right. And now because uh, I want the blue to be a little bit more dramatic, so I will add the saturation. We like more saturation for our landscape photographs. That's pretty much what we like. 
uh, then I'll tone down the white balance a little bit to make it a little bit colder to emphasize on the blue. That's a little bit too much, so I'll bring out a little bit more. And pretty much that's it. I don't think I want to adjust anymore. The image looks good as it is. Again, if we look side by side, you can see a huge improvement just by adding the gradation adjustment, a little bit of highlight and shadow, uh, play with the white balance and increase uh, the saturation. Oh, one more thing. We do have the dehaze filter and the dehaze will increase the clarity of uh, the subject stats in the far distance due to haze. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you what the haze does. I'm just gonna drag it all the way to maximum. You do okay, this is a bit too much. It looks very scary. <laughs> Let's bring it back to the little bit middle. Okay, so I'll show you side by side what the dehaze does. Alright, so pretty much if you zoom in the details, uh, it takes some time for the image to refresh. You can see that the detail is still maintained, the image is still very sharp. Uh, the dehaze filter does bring in a little bit of uh, grain in the image, but to me this is not a big problem. If you don't want to see a lot of grain, then you can go to the noise filter and just apply. A noise filter is at this uh, final third tab here. Down the noise filter, you just select low. And you can see that uh, it will process a little bit. Now you have less grain in the sky. The sky appears a little bit more uh, smoother. That if if you're very scared of a noise or grain problem. That's it. I think I'm quite happy with this shot. I won't do anything to it any further. Uh, okay, coming to this image of this bird. This was taken at Kuala Lumpur Bird Park. All right, uh, I will not do much to this image. I just want to show you because this is very important. This image was taken uh, with the Olympus Pan F. Uh, I was using the 40 to 150 Pro lens. It was taken at full 150 mil uh, at f4, and I was using 1 40th of a shutter speed. Zooming in, you can see the image is already very sharp. I didn't add any sharpening. If we look at the default camera settings, uh, the sharpness is set to zero, but the noise filter is off. It is already very sharp. A lot of people ask, Robin, how do you get images to be so sharp? It is impossible. I can't get it in my camera. My answer to you is shooting discipline. You cannot fake sharp images. If your images are blurred while you capture it, there's nothing you can do in post-processing that to, to rescue your blur images. There are two causes of blur. One is out of focus, one is camera shake. So Olympus cameras have very powerful image stabilization, so I normally don't have anything to worry when it comes to hand holding my image. Uh, so I just had to make sure that there, the subject movement is, is uh, non-existent. I just have to make sure that my subject is in perfectly, critically accurate focus. Once I have accurate focus, the image is extremely sharp, especially if you're using Olympus Pro Lens or Prime Lens. So I don't necessarily have anything that I want to do with this image, but I want to show you uh, what can be done in the color tab. So from if, if you're using a newer camera from Olympus Pan F uh, or anything newer than Olympus Pan F, there is this tab that just color. Uh, if you're using any camera that's older than the Pan F, such as the EM5 Mark II, or the EM10 Mark II, or <laughs> EPL7, anything older than Pan F, you don't have uh, the luxury to do any of this adjustment. So say that I want to increase the blue color, right? So if I'll just exaggerate the, the sliders to, to show you the results. So if I increase the blue colors, you can see the blue color is intensified uh, compared before and after. You can see that the blue is more exaggerated here. Then say that I want to decrease the green color so that the blue color pops. I can selectively decrease the green color in the background. All right. Okay, so you just compare before and after. Now I'm getting rid of the green color. 
And if, say, I want to increase the red color for whatever reason to make the eye look really bloody. I know this is a very bad editing. I'm just showing you what's possible uh, with this color adjustment tab. Uh, you can see that I've further increased the saturation in the red channel of the photograph. Now, obviously, this is a very bad shot. Uh, and if you want to reset these images or image settings uh, before you do all these adjustments, just right click the image here. Uh, there should be a reset here somewhere, revert to original, just press that. And there you go, this was the original setting. There is nothing much I wanna do with this image. Uh, this is straight out of camera, I think it's already very good. Another example of a sharp image, this is my macro shot. People ask, Robin, how do you get such sharp images? Oh, did you crop your image? I do sometimes crop a little bit, I don't crop a lot. As you can see, this is very close to the dragonfly already. Looking at the compound eyes, if I zoom in, it is perfectly sharp. Now, this sharpness, you cannot do anything in post-processing. You can only achieve it when your images are in perfect focus and you don't have any shake or your subject don't move. All right, uh, I maybe want to... Uh, you see this image was taken with EM5 Mark II and uh, the color tab adjustment is all grayed out. I can't do any color adjustments here. All right, so only PANF and newer. So in this image, I maybe want to do a little bit of adjustments. Uh, maybe I just want to increase the saturation a little bit. There you go. Uh, and, and there's these bright spots here. I want to decrease the bright spots. So I'll just tone down the highlights uh, so that the bright spots are decreased. And maybe I'll increase a little bit of shadow. And pretty much that's it. Just very minor adjustments. You don't even see any difference. Uh, the image is already good to go. I cannot emphasize enough. Please, please, please make sure that you pay more attention when you are shooting. You cannot fix a lot of things in post-processing. Your post-processing step is only to enhance what is already a good image. Practicing good shooting discipline cannot be replaced. Uh, it takes a lot, a lot of patience, a lot of dedication, and of course, you need to train a lot to get to a very proficient level. Now, moving on. All right, this particular image of this Huntsman spider was taken uh, with an LED light. Uh, it was a ring light, so you can see that uh, the ring light is reflected on the eye here. So the image it looks a little bit greenish. That's because of the LED light cast. Now, I because it's green, I will compensate this using the white balance setting again and the custom white balance. I'll push it further to the magenta side. That's a little bit too much. I'll bring it back. And it still looks a little bit cold, so I'll bring up the warmth. That's too much. I'll bring it back down. Bring it down a little bit more. I think we're almost there. All right, I'm quite happy with this. And if you look at uh, the head of the spider, it looks like a little bit overexposed because of the light. So I'll tone down the highlight, I'll just minus four. You can see that the head is a, lot, a little bit more balanced now. And because I was using uh, ISO 640, so if you zoom in, you can see a little bit of noise, but I think this is manageable. So I'm not gonna do anything to the noise reduction. It looks quite good, the details are there. Everything looks sharp and crips. It's perfectly in focus. Uh, let's see before and after. See how I bring down the highlight in the, the head area so that it's more balanced and how I have made the image a little bit warmer. Uh, that's it. These are the adjustments that I normally do. I only do very basic adjustments to my images, but I do make sure that I get the right color. That's the main advantage. If you shoot raw, you basically get to change the white balance as much as you want without destroying the image. You still keep the pixel integrity and the image will still maintain its quality no matter how you stretch the colors in the white balance. Shoot roll, guys. <laughs> you can reap the benefits. I have another image of another spider just to show you. Zoom in, refresh. You can see all the details, individual hair. This is scary. This is a linked spider. 
Uh, I always find this. And this is non-crop, guys. This is full roll. And I always, always, uh, this is what I tell people when you shoot macro, fill your screen so that you don't have to, to crop anymore. So this is, if I crop, I'm going to chop off the legs. So this is pretty much fill the frame. You can go near with your macro lens. And again, this is another example of ready to go out of camera shot without needing any adjustment. You'll be surprised. A lot of my images are already there. I don't necessarily need to do uh, any adjustment. And if you talk to any print masters out there, if you're doing any serious printing, you will realize that the more adjustments you make to your photographs, the more you edit, the more the pixels will be destroyed, the worse it's going to look in the final print. The less you adjust, the more you get right during, during your shooting stage, the better your image will look in the final print quality. Okay, moving on. Let's try to find something interesting. This example of a portrait shot, people always say that how do I get a sharp image, I mean sharp critical focus on the eye. I'm not joking when the image is really sharp. This was taken at ISO 200 using the super incredible 45mm f1.8 lens and this is already wide open at f1.8. You can see how amazingly sharp this is. And a trick that I can show you is just to turn off the noise filter. Uh, if you have, again, if you're very scared of the grain, I know you can see a little bit of grain here. You can use the noise filter. You can put it low. Basically, it smoothens the noise. You don't really see the noise anymore, but you can, still can see uh, the sharpness and the, de the fine details, right? I don't know if you can see the difference. This is before and this is after. You can see it's a little bit harsher. This is a little bit smoother and still can maintain very good detail. Now, I don't recommend you going uh, noise filter high because it will make the image look painterly. You can see here it smudges the details. I know it gets rid of the high ISO noise, but at the same time, you also lose important details that will make the image look good. Now, I know that many people are very allergic when they look at high ISO noise, but this noise comes hand in hand with details. And if you get rid of the noise together with the details, you have a very fake looking, over-processed, smudged, painterly looking watercolor image. This is the problem with a lot of smartphones. Actually, this image is still, even though with noise filter highs, it looks a lot better than a lot of smartphone compressed JPEG images out there. Smartphone processing, you think that the HDR is doing a lot of good work balancing the highlight and shadow. You think that it's good in balancing the colors and everything. But what it's doing is actually smudging all the fine details and giving you a smooth, doe-like skin tone or, you know, images that doesn't have useful detail. If you want your image to look natural, I suggest turning it, you know, the noise filter off or just put it to low and your image will look much, much, much better. You will thank me for this. This is a very, very important tip. Now moving along, how do we correct perspective distortion? Uh, this is an image that I've taken in a rush because I saw this dude having the yellow construction hat as well as yellow boots and I want to frame him against the yellow roller shutter and the yellow frame here and this building has a lot of yellow doors and windows. Okay, so how do we correct the perspective distortion? We go to this tab here. I don't really know what this tab is called. It's the fourth one from the end or the fifth one from the start. All right, here we have keystone compensation. Check that. All right, once that is enabled, uh, then you see that we want to correct the horizontal perspective to this direction. I don't really know how much that we need. That's a little bit too much. So I'm just playing by ear until I almost get it right. I think just a little bit less will be okay. Then we will also want to bring it back to this direction. Let's pull it here a little bit more. That's it. And the next thing I want to do is just to uh, rotate this image uh, that will be in the crop section, which is at the second uh, tab. Then we will try to rotate the image until it's perfectly straight. I think we almost got it. 
almost, almost, almost got it. And once we are happy with this, we go to the other tab and we can see, yeah, we almost got it. It's not quite there. I think we need to fix the uh, horizontal perspective distortion. I think I overdid it a little bit as well as this one. Let's fix it back. Bring it up a little bit more. That's too much. Urgh. There. I think that's uh, that's good enough. Maybe we'll bring a little bit more. There. Almost straight. All right, moving along. Let's see what other interesting shots that I can correct. Ah, the Milky Way shot. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, you can't really see the Milky Way from the camera's capture. Actually, you can. Uh, this particular image was quite special to me because I saw the Milky Way for the first time in my life in this outing. I was testing the EM5 Mark II and I was using the Olympus 12 f2 lens to shoot this. Uh, there's nothing special in this shot. I'm sure you can find a lot of better Milky Way shots out there. But this shot was really, really, really special for me because it was my first time seeing Milky Way with my naked eye. So I'm going to the third tab here with most of the settings. The first thing I want to do is uh, bring down the white balance. I'm going to go to 3800. That will bring the sky to look a little bit cold, but that's okay. Uh, next, I will tone down the highlight so that we don't want the stars to be uh, overexposed. Then I will also tone down the exposure a little bit. Minus 0 0.3. I will increase the contrast. I can see how much difference it makes. Just see before and after. I'm not done yet. Uh, let's go to single view. Then I'll tone down the shadow all the way to minus, oh, that's too much. Let's go to minus seven, minus six. All right, maybe a little bit too much. Let's put minus five. There you go. I think that's, the best we can do with this software. Uh, this is after all a very basic software. If you want to further enhance the Milky Way, you do need to do uh, localized editing or layering and that will require a more powerful software. Olympus Workspace doesn't allow you to do any of that. You can't do any local adjustments here. It's everything, every settings that you adjust on the panels here, it is basically a global adjustment. Uh, pixel peeping the stars, you do get a lot of noise. This is very normal because my noise filter, if you go to this tab here, is off. Uh, this was sh shot at ISO 2500. So if you want to decrease the noise, I would suggest, depends on how allergic you are to noise. Some people can get really, really riled up when they see noise. It's like, it makes the skin crawl or something. So if you really don't want the noise, then I'll suggest going to standard. See, it's a lot smoother. I'll compare side by side. You can see there's more noise here now. I've applied the noise filter standard. Uh, it is a lot, a lot smoother. You don't see a lot of grain. Uh, you can go to high, but that will make your image look very, very watercolor and painterly light, which I don't like. Personally, I'm okay with noise filter low. I think it is perfectly fine because I don't see the image in 100%. I look at the image uh, as it is, full screen, and even in such a large display, the image still looks really great. Um, I don't see any noise looking at it, this in full view. I only have to pixel peep to really look at the noise even when I pixel peep, I'm okay with this little bit of no small traces of noise there and here. And you have to remember, as I mentioned earlier, the small traces of noise adds integrity to the image. It adds structure. It makes the image look more realistic. This is the best I can do to the Milky Way image with the Olympus uh, workspace to do post-processing here. Moving on, I have a high ISO shot that I want to show. 
This is the ISO 6400 shot that I've shown in my recent video shooting with the EM1 Mark III. Yes, this image was taken with the EM1 Mark III at the ISO 6400. Uh, I need to go to ISO 6400 because I'm taking a portrait of a stranger. I cannot ask him to stay perfectly still. That's not human. People do have micro movements. So I need my shutter speed to be about 1 over 80th of a second. Uh, and I'm shooting with a long lens. It's a 45mm lens. So shutter speed at 1 over 80th of a second, I need ISO 6400. I was using the 12 to 45mm lens at f4 bright open wide open. So zooming in the detail, it is still very sharp. Of course, you see uh, traces of noise. This is very high ISO for a micro four third system. If you don't want to see this noise, as I've already mentioned earlier, go to the noise filter. You can apply low or standard. I'll just apply low. And there you go. It is so much better now. There's less noise and yet the details are very well maintained. Uh, it takes some time for the image to refresh. It looks a little bit blur now, but once it refreshes, you can see it looks really good. Looking at it side by side, you don't really see any difference. I didn't do any more adjustments besides the noise filter. Now, the next one, this is the ISO 12800 portrait shot. Uh, that got a lot of attention. A lot of people say, Robin, you don't need ISO 12800. If you use f1.8 lens, you can use ISO 3200. True, but I was also testing the 12 to 45 lens and I was stuck at f4. And again, this is a portrait of a person. If I use shutter speed as low as 1 over 20th or 1 over 30th of a second, once the person moves just a little bit and you get blur in the image. I don't want that to happen. Even 1 over 80th of a second is quite dangerous. Now I'm taking a gamble. Comfortably, I would want to shoot over 1 over 100th of a second when I'm taking portraits like this. Uh, zooming in, again, you see quite noticeable noise because my noise filter was turned to low. Now I can increase this to standard and it gets rid of most of the noise. If you set it to off, yes, there's plenty of noise. This is 12,800. So for very high ISO shooting with micro four thirds. I know that the smaller sensor is not the best when it comes to low light shooting. So I would suggest using noise filter standard for super high ISO like 12,800 or uh, 25,600 if you have to go that high. So this is uh, noise filter low and on the right, this is a noise filter standard. Actually, you know what? I think I'll just stay with low. I don't care about noise. I'm okay with the presence of the noise. I want the structure in the image. I want it to look a little bit sharp. I'm not very scared looking at the noise. I don't know why people are so scared of the noise. It is not really destructive to the image. As long as the fine details are there, I am perfectly happy. All right, and people don't pixel peep. People just look at the image as is and looking at it this way, the image still looks fantastic. If you don't zoom to 100%, if I just zoom it to say 57%, let it refresh, the image still looks fantastic. Not a problem. And this is micro four thirds at 12,800. All right, what else do I have to share with you guys? What was this taken with? This was taken with Olympus Pen F. I just want to play with the color again because the color is very fun. We go to adjust color. Let's say that I want to intensify the blue color. Let's go max, max out the blue, uh, max out all the green. You can see this really scary looking color. <laughs> I don't recommend doing this. Just see the before and after. That's too much, right? Guys, post-processing is not something you can just add more and more it, it, the more you add just it doesn't mean that you get a better result it's like cooking it doesn't mean that the more oil or spice or the more salt that you add to to your dish the taste will be better you do need to know where the limit is and you don't go over that limit if it's too salty, if it's too spicy, it just ruins the taste. It is the same with post-processing. There is a limit. You don't go over. You don't add too much color. You don't add too much processing. You don't, do, you don't mess too much with the sliders. It doesn't mean that the more sliders you mess, the better your outcome will be. No, the less you adjust, the 
better your image is. I am all in when it comes to minimalist. Okay, um, this is an image of Shinjuku in Tokyo. I am up at the Tokyo Metropolitan Tower overlooking the Mount Fuji. I just want to show off what the dehaze can do. I'm just going to close this, uh, this filter. Uh, I'm not doing any adjustments on this particular image. I'm just going to dehaze. All right, uh, it takes some time for it to, to process. And just see before and after the dehaze does a splendid job in keeping the image to make it look really sharp uh, and sort of like give you the illusion that there is less haze. I think it's a trick of adding more contrast, pushing the highlight and shadow a little bit there and here to gain uh, sort of like a more cleaner result uh, without the blur of the haze that's blanketing the image. I think it works really well. Uh, this was a tool that was exclusive to Lightroom at one time, but I'm very glad that Olympus brings the haze here. I don't touch the clarity tool. Uh, pretty much, I'm quite happy with the clarity already. I don't think there's any need to add any more clarity to this image. This is There's plenty of clarity to go around. There's plenty of fine detail here. I think I'm very happy with this. I'm not gonna touch anything else. There you go. Uh, I don't think there's anything more I want to add in my post-processing. I've shared most of my tips. I've shared how I've done my white balance settings, which I do in a lot of my food photographs, people photographs, to adjust the skin tone, uh, to get the warmth or the, the coolness balance of the image. Uh, I also shared how I balance the highlight and shadow. Ooh, let me just do one more. Yeah, this, this image was featured by the restaurant in the Instagram site. So I just, yeah, this image is a very good image to demonstrate because I actually do a lot of adjustments to this and it, the final image looks different. And this will be like a combination of everything that I've just mentioned. It's a good closing image as a summary. So I intended this image to be in a square crop. Uh, so please ignore the dishes at the side. I'm just gonna use the crop. Right, because Instagram favors square crops. So this was shot for Instagram. I'll just crop in tighter a little bit. So we don't have to see the distractions. As you see, this dish is a little bit cold. So I'm going to make it a little bit warmer. Oh, that's too much. Maybe 6,200. Right. Make it a little bit. And you can see there's a bright area and dark area. I want to balance the bright and dark area. To do that, I always use the gradation. Auto, it immediately brings up the details in the shadow. I'll just show you the before and after. You can see how much shadow you can see here, right? Okay, that's... Next, uh, I... Oops, that's not what I want. Next, I will further tone down the highlights a little bit more increase the shadow, decrease the mid-tone a little bit. Okay, almost there for food photographs. I always like to add more saturation for that look a little bit punchier, a little bit, a little bit of contrast, but not too much. All right, it's almost there. Yep, this, is, this was taken with E1 Mark II, and I think we are ready to go. Yep, compare with uh, before image. You can see how much difference a little bit of adjustment makes to the food photograph. It looks a lot more delicious. So this photograph was posted to Instagram. I tagged the restaurant and it was featured on the main Instagram page. All right, I think that's all I have to share. I don't have any more tricks I can share with you here. There are other things that you can do. You can, in this tab, you can apply any art filter that you like. This is pop art, which is really scary. Uh, you can do the Rama, all right? You can apply art filter. I'm not gonna apply art filter here. You can apply color filter as well. You can do a lot of things uh, with the Olympus workspace, but generally I don't put a lot of adjustments to my image. I do very minimal um, tweaking. And as I've mentioned earlier, my images are as good as straight out of the camera. 
I hope you have found my sharing on the Olympus Road Space useful, and I do hope that you start exploring the Olympus Road Space on your own. However, I do want to remind you that I prefer to go out and shoot more than spending too much time in front of the computer doing post-processing. The fun part is grabbing the camera, being out there, and having some shutter therapy action. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up, please consider subscribing to this channel, and I will definitely see you in the next one. Until then, please remember to go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.